This past January at CES 2018, I got a chance to check out the HP Envy X2. It's a two-in-one running on an ARM processor, specifically the Snapdragon 835. I had limited time with it, so I really couldn't formulate an opinion one way or the other, but I thought it was a very interesting device. Well, the HP Envy X2 arrived in the studio two days ago, and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. And one thing I do know about this device, it is a battery monster. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this this is my unboxing and first look at the HP Envy X2. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as I have a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. It comes in at $999, but it seems to be sold out right now. Hopefully availability will open up very soon. Now packaging is pretty typical as we've come to expect with HP as of late. Opening the box, you're greeted by some documentation. It's a quick start guide letting you know a little bit about this device and how it works. Next, you're greeted by the unit itself and holding it for the first time, it feels very thin, very light, very premium and very high end. Next is the keyboard. It has a full leather plastic kind of finish. And I think I prefer the Alcantara of the type cover you get with the Surface Pro. But again, we'll do more testing with that. And of course you get the HP pen. It comes with one quadruple A battery. It's the same technology as used as a Surface pen. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. In the box, they include a USB-C to USB type A adapter, which you'll need because this only has one USB-C port. And you get your power charger. It uses USB Type-C to charge this device. We'll talk more about the battery and the charging times in the full review. What really got me excited about the NVX2 is the fact that it's powered by the Snapdragon 835 processor. That's the same processor you'd find in say last year's flagship smartphones. And it's pretty robust for a smartphone, but the question I have is, is it robust enough for Windows 10? So I started to see what are some of the benefits you'd get running a mobile processor, an ARM processor such as a Snapdragon 835. That means you're going to have this always on connected technology. And it has that built in Qualcomm X16 LTE modem. That's pretty good. You would find that on some high end smartphones as far as speed is concerned when it comes to the LTE. Now it is unlocked and I was able to use it with my Project Vi SIM which utilizes the T-Mobile network. And that got me thinking about another question. Who is this really geared towards? And I think the answer is pretty clear. It's the road warrior, the one who needs always on connected LTE and phenomenal battery life. And I think that's what the Snapdragon 835 provides in the Windows 10 experience. And speaking of Windows 10, it comes with Windows 10 S and uh, yeah, I'm not having any of that. You can upgrade it free to Windows 10 Pro, which I promptly did as soon as I set this device up. HP claims you're going to get about 20 plus hours of video playback on this device. That's pretty phenomenal. And I have to say, in the two days that I've been using it, battery life has been off the charts. I started my day at 7 a.m. and in 24 hours, it still had 50% left. I did not need to charge. I used it under my normal usage conditions. That's 100% screen brightness and using the LTE built-in modem, as well as Wi-Fi, doing some streaming of Netflix, YouTube, some word processing, some emails, and my really normal everyday use. Of course, I'll do my formal battery testing, which will be in my full review, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna put this thing through its paces for the next week or so, so stay tuned, be patient. I will get you all the numbers when the results are in. But suffice it to say, this battery is unbelievable on this device. It has really been a longevity king in the two days that I've used it. Of course, it's my initial impressions. Again, wait for that full review for the final results. Now, the other thing that I'm really impressed with so far in my initial use of this device is its display. It's a 12.3 inch IPS display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1280. That's 188 pixels per inch, and it has a three by two aspect ratio. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat, this is a very bright display, making it good for both indoor and outdoor use. I'm thinking this is gonna be at least 375 nits, maybe 400 plus. We'll see in that final result. And it's covered in Gorilla Glass Force, making it a little bit more scratch resistant than something that doesn't have, of course, Gorilla Glass. 
I'm happy to report the viewing angles are excellent and there is no screen bleed. Now the blacks are very deep and the colors are very vibrant. They're popping off the display. Really excellent job HP in this department. What's not so great are the bezels. Now they're a little bit thick for 2018. Now I understand this is a two in one, so you will be using it in tablet mode and you will have to be able to handle this device without interfering with the display, thus the thicker bezels. But still, I can't help but think this is 2018 and we're moving towards a bezel-less design. Now, I really like the fact that you do get the keyboard and the HP pen at this $9.99 price point. We'll talk more about the HP pen in just a moment. But as far as the keyboard is concerned, it has about 1.2 millimeters of key travel. It's pretty comfortable to type on. I think it's okay. I don't think it's quite as good as the type cover you'd get with the Surface Pro. This has a more of a faux leather plastic feel to it, whereas in the type cover, it has that Alcantara fabric on the outside and it has a backlit keyboard. It's only one level, but it did work well. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a good keyboard and I will be putting it through further testing in that full review. And in typical HP fashion, they went with a wide trackpad and it was okay. I thought you can, you do your Windows 10 gestures, your two finger scrolling worked fine. I thought it was okay, it was pretty responsive. I have no real complaints so far on this touchpad. And attached to the keyboard is the pen loop so you can store the pen. Now speaking of the HP pen, it is included in the $9.99 price point, unlike the Microsoft Surface Pro line where you have to buy it as a separate accessory as you do with the type cover. It uses the same Entrig pen technology and I think it has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, but I haven't been able to confirm that with HP or at least not as of yet. And I was able to use it with the Surface Pen, so it definitely does work. And now going into this, I was a little bit concerned about the Snapdragon processor and inking on this device. So far, it's been pretty good. I didn't see really much of any delay, so I'm going to do more testing on that, so stay tuned for the full review. But so far, my initial impressions are that the HP Pen works okay. Now this being a two-in-one, you're going to use the pen or even your finger or whatever in what we call tablet mode. Pulling it out of the case is rather easy and using it with the pen actually I thought was really good. I like that three by two aspect ratio and the fact that this is a thin and light device makes it easy to handle, especially as a tablet. Now, unlike the Surface Pro where the kickstand is attached to the Surface Pro itself, here it's attached to the case, which is a bit of a different scenario. But it worked well nonetheless. You get different viewing angles, obviously. It has a pretty sturdy metal hinge, and it hopefully will hold up well over time. I've only used it a couple of days, but in my limited use, it looks like it will hold up. Now, as far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the right side of the device, let's start off with its 3.5 millimeter headset jack. So far, it worked well. I didn't see any interference whatsoever. The sound was really good. And as I pointed out earlier, it has the Qualcomm X16 LTE modem and it worked really well. And you get your volume buttons up and down. And moving over to the left side of the device, you get your micro SD card slot for storage expansion. And finally, you get your USB Type-C port that'll do data, charge, and display out. And let's not forget about the power button located on the top of the device. And you get two front-facing speakers. I actually like front-facing speakers as opposed to on the bottom or on the sides. And they are Bang & Olufsen branded. Now let's hear them in action. And here you see me setting up the Windows Hello camera on the front. There's no fingerprint sensor or anything like that. There is that Windows Hello camera, good for logging in with Windows Hello. So this is the front facing camera on the HP Envy X2. This is the one running with the Snapdragon 835 processor. You be the judge, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this uh, camera on the Envy X2. Uh, I think it's okay. It's a little bit so-so in low light situations. I'm not in a well lit room, so this certainly gives you an idea of what it can do in a dimly lit room. But again, I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in that comment section below. Now, the keyboard is on a typing angle this is what it sounds like when you're on a Skype conversation and you're typing 
So this has been the front-facing camera on the HP Envy 2. And yes, it does have a camera on the back, and no, I don't take photos or videos with a 2-in-1 or a tablet. But for those of you that do, it does do 4K video, 30 frames per second, and it wasn't very good. There was some kind of distortion going on, and I'm not really sure what's the deal in low light situations with this. It wasn't very good. As far as photos are concerned, they were so-so. But the one use case scenario that might be good for some of you, taking pictures or taking photos of your notes, that might come in handy. But other than that, just stay away from this back camera. Okay, so here's the deal with performance. It has the Snapdragon 835 processor, it's an ARM processor, and it does use some kind of emulation mode to run regular Windows programs, such as Google Chrome. But I wasn't getting an accurate reading when I tried to run the Geekbench 4 test because of that emulation mode that it is using. It didn't give me quite the full performance that we were expecting, and here are the results. Now using a web browser such as Edge, which is optimized by Microsoft to work better on the Snapdragon 835 than say the Chrome browser, which has to run it in some sort of compatibility mode, I guess. But from what I see from these results, there is a big difference. So if you're going to get this device, you might want to use Edge as far as performance is concerned. And this was confirmed by the Octane 2.0 test. As you can see, the Edge browser versus the Chrome browser. And for those of you looking to do AAA titles on this, look elsewhere. This is not that kind of machine. It doesn't have that kind of power. But I think you obviously know that. But for the casual gamer, you can play games like Asphalt 8 Airborne, as you see here. Games from the Windows Store will play fine. As far as video editing, I wouldn't be doing any kind of video editing on this. It's not that powerful. Remember, this is a Snapdragon 835. It's not a Core i5 or a Core i7. So please keep that in mind. I'll do more testing, more benchmarks in that full review. We'll get a better picture of this. Now it can run x86 programs, 32-bit programs without much of an issue, if any. However, some 64-bit apps are hit or miss. Again, I'll do more testing in that full review. So what do you think about the HP Envy X2 running on a Snapdragon 835? So far, it's an interesting device. I need more time with it. I've only had about two days with it, but I can tell you this. It's been fantastic in terms of battery life. I've really been so surprised on how good this battery life is. But then again, we shouldn't be surprised. It's running on an ARM processor, something that runs a flagship from last year, the Snapdragon 835. Now it does only have four gigabytes of RAM and only 128 gigabytes of storage, something to keep in mind. But it is expandable via the micro SD card slot. This outside exterior is a big fingerprint magnet. That's another thing that I don't like about this, as opposed to say the type cover on the Surface Pro. But as far as performance is concerned, it's interesting. It's If you don't expect too much from this device in the sense that you are you are that road warrior I was talking about, the one who needs that LTE, the one that needs that epic battery life when you're on the road, a productivity machine to get things done such as word processing, emails, streaming, Netflix, YouTube, all that stuff, you can get it done. As far as Skype, you can use that front-facing camera, 1080p, for perfect for Skype. Now I have a lot of benchmarks to run on this, but speaking of benchmarks, again, I wasn't able to get a full multi-core score or full single core score in the Geekbench 4 because it's running in an emulation mode, it seems, and so you're not gonna get the proper numbers. But using it as an everyday device, using it as with the web browsing, using it for the productivity, as I stated, it's fine. For everyday tasks, you won't have a problem. But when you try to do AAA gaming, when you try to do 4K video editing, that's where you're going to run into trouble. It's gonna run x86 programs or apps actually fine. Ta start talking about 64-bit apps, that's where things start to get a little bit not so great. But again, I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Is there anything specific you want me to test? Now, as far as the pen is concerned, I really like it. It's the Entrick pen technology, same as the Surface Pen. In fact, I was able to use my Surface Pen on this device and this vice versa onto the Surface Book that I have. But again, this is a very interesting device. I got a lot of testing to do on it. I will be doing that and in the full review, which in about a week or so will be posted. So let me get through all my testing and let's come to some conclusions. But so far, initial impressions, I do like it for what it is, a battery beast. As far as performance, it's adequate. That's all I can say so far, but it's a very interesting experience, that's for sure. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.